All right, what's up guys? Uh, finally coming at you guys with a new video. I know I'm a few days late, I apologize. Uh, I had to take some time off for me, uh, but we're back. And this one's gonna be a little bit of a different one. It's not gonna be a Project Junker. It's actually going to be the start of a new series. This is just kind of the introduction. Um, and it's going to be my RX-8 build. I'm doing a build breakdown of, you know, phase one of the build um kind of going over costs and what you what you should expect when living with the rotary uh it's really really not that difficult i've had the most fun with this car out of any of the cars i've ever owned um it's been worth every single penny and i'm super super excited to start this series um you know we're gonna get a new motor in here soon we're gonna be doing plenty of things to this car going forward i haven't recorded much you know with this phase one because i was enjoying the car so much this youtube thing was to the side and now that i'm actually starting to make content we're going to start filming with the rx8 oh man it has been a while since i have sat in here All right, guys, so we're going to start with the purchase price. Back in July, I bought this car for $7,000 cash, and I knew right off the bat compression was low. You know, I don't like this camera angle, and we're going to fix that. So I bought this car in July for $7,000, and I knew right from the get-go that compression was on the lower side and that I'd have to think about rebuilding it in the future but I did everything I could to keep this thing alive as long as I could uh, I pre-mixed my fuel uh, I'm using the thicker weight oil and on top of all of that right here I have my mods list now the mods list isn't necessarily me keeping the car alive or doing anything like that but it's just some of these are supporting mods that help this car last longer and they're mods that I 100% recommend anybody getting into an RX-8, you know, any rotary, but especially the RX-8 just because of how picky these cars are with modifications and, you know, the way you drive them and the way you daily them. They are a super picky car, but it's worth, it's worth it so much when you're in this car revving it out all the way every day all right so i'm doing this kind of in order uh from the first mods i did to the last so starting out i bought the car for seven thousand dollars like i mentioned before first part i put on here i got a catless mid pipe that was 118.99 um this was easily the best mod i did to this thing um it i mean the car shot flames with a stock muffler with without the cat it sounded way better, way crisper. Uh, it performed noticeably better, and it had more power at the high end. Now, this is a mod that I 100% recommend because if you have an RX-8 or if you've been in the RX-8 forums, you know that these cars hate catalytic converters. Like, they burn through them, they clog them up, and in turn, it'll kill the compression in the motor, which is not what you want. And when I pulled my mid-pipe off, uh, the cat was failed, um, but it was a performance cat that had failed, so I... Leads me to believe this guy was pre-mixing way more than the recommended amount, or the amount that you should even really need to pre-mix. I put on the catless mid-pipe, and it changes car for the better by a ton. Are just like, these are the small things that, um like appearance modifications and things that didn't exactly work out. Um, radio dash kit I bought for 170 that ended up not working at all actually. It was horrible. So I ditched that, went back to the factory radio, which is now broken, so I need to buy another one. Uh, these RX-8s go through radios like crazy. Uh, Mazda suck with interior design on them little bit with some of the electronics but that's okay uh it's not what you buy the car for right i did led fog lights i got all new led peanut bulbs 
and LED taillights. That all summed up, came around to $130. We have the wrap. I wrap my gas cap and just some small things here and there. I wrapped all the emblems and put them all on the car. Uh, that changed the look of the car tremendously. The gas cap when I bought it was chrome and we don't like chrome. So got rid of that real quick. The next thing was a CSF radiator. Uh, that was $306.69. Um, it was 128 bucks for all of my coolant. Uh, Mazda specific coolant is the only coolant you should be putting in this car. Uh, any other coolant will not cut it, I promise you. Um, Mazda's very picky with the coolant that you put in these, and for good reason. It's a rotary, and, and they need all the help that they can get with cooling. So, when you're putting in coolant, remember to get the right coolant. There's more on that later. Uh... Premix tools, it came to 2577. I premix it, you know. Very I, every single fill up I do an ounce or an ounce and a half per gallon of fuel, depending on how uh how I'm feeling with it. Uh the more you premix, the angrier these things get. They sound so much better. They pop, crackle, shoot a whole lot more flames the more you premix. Uh I usually but premixing it comes with a benefit. The OMPs in these cars or the oil metering pumps are actually pretty good, but with any rotary, it's always good to have that extra lubrication, even if you don't think you need it. I promise you that you do. Uh, next was the Bennett Built Coolant Reservoir that was $270. It's a billet aluminum coolant reservoir. It changed the look of the engine bay a ton, and it helps because the coolant level sensor is actually replaceable as opposed to the factory unit which isn't replaceable and it gives people a lot of issues with false alarms uh, when it gets really hot and goes through its heat cycle over and over and over they wear out uh, they are plastic so it warps plastic a little bit and kind of screws up that sensor so I got this one for the interchangeable sensor because I had problems with my sensor and it was only five dollars more than the plastic reservoir for an aluminum reservoir it's another thing parts for these cars are really really expensive uh, they didn't really they only made I think 200,000 of them or, or some small number of the series 1 RX-8s so these companies put a lot of money into development for these because they don't make a lot of them so they have to make that money back somehow and therefore everything is a lot more expensive for these cars next up I blew my muffler off in August, I believe, or, yep, in August, I blew my muffler off. And that was a disaster. And I ended up going to AutoZone, and I got a bunch of piping, and I straight piped it for about $100. Um, if you own an RX-8, don't straight pipe it. It was cool for a day or two. Uh, it was loud. Uh, the crackles were insane. But at the end of the day, it was obnoxious, and it was an attention grabber, and I lost a lot of torque with that. So, that... I wouldn't recommend, I only did that as a temporary thing for my next mod, which was the HKS High Power Catback Exhaust System. This was $580, and it completely transformed the way this car sounded, performed. It's, I mean, my radio's broken, and I never minded driving with without the radio because it sounds so amazing. It sounds really, really good. I've gotten... A ton of compliments at car meets and cruises and all that saying wow that car it sounds really good like what do you have done to it and I tell them you know just a mid pipe and the cat back and this cat back made a huge difference for this car and it sounds really really good I recommend it for anybody who has a RX-8 next up were the lowering springs I lowered this car quite a bit um, I believe it's an inch and 
three quarters in the front or two inches in the front and then an inch and a half in the rear again completely transformed the look of this car i totally i fell in love with it oh like over again after this thing was lowered it it looked so good like i can't even explain i'm gonna throw some pictures up here but i think they speak for themselves um now when i bought the car uh, i thought it needed a new clutch uh, i got some weird hesitation right around 7500 rpm it basically cut it bogged out for about 250 rpm and then it revved the rest of the way up so i got they installed a new clutch for me a stage four exity clutch for three hundred dollars which is only labor because they really wanted to get this get rid of this car it's an rx8 i don't know what dealer wouldn't want to get rid of one of these they're ticking time bombs but nonetheless i have a new clutch and it's really 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 aggressive and it makes it kind of undrivable sometimes but i love it then i was getting some chatter from the clutch i'd never had this aggressive of a clutch and i should have known but i didn't uh, i thought it was i'd mistaken it for the throwout bearing took it in 586 dollars later i find out that it indeed was just my clutch and not the throwout bearing so that was a waste of 600 dollars but nonetheless it was spent modify the stock air box these rx8 air boxes they come with two fins in them which basically only allows them to utilize a third of the air box and it's really only for noise cancellation so i took those fins out and i get a lot more induction noises it sounds amazing and it did give a noticeable boost in in power a little bit you wouldn't think it would but it did every little thing helps with these i did four oil changes they're about 40 dollars each this is just routine maintenance stuff uh this is this now is the cost of of having an an RX-8 as a daily um, and I uh, <clears throat> fuel uh, each week I was paying about $80 in fuel I filled up twice a week 93 premium here in Michigan um, this doesn't count for any of the amazing trips that I took this car on <clears throat> I took this car up to god I can't remember where it was Grand Haven. I took this car up to Grand Haven. Uh, this car has been to Kalamazoo and back twice. Uh, I took this car to uh, Grand Rapids to the US 131 Motorsports Park where my uncle was drag racing in an event that weekend. That was a blast. Um, I've taken this car quite a ways. I've taken it to Shelby, Ohio for a cruise that I did for my buddy um, whose cousin passed away of leukemia um that was an amazing trip and i stopped at adrian college on the way to drop a buddy off this car has been all over the place and they say you shouldn't drive long distance with them but i disagree for better or for worse the drives i took in this thing were the best drives especially when i had a good passenger with me it it's worth it it's a really really good car really driver focused and i wouldn't change anything about it and the other thing I forgot after I lowered my car this is the more on the radiator I hit a groundhog and it destroyed my CSF radiator and I had to get a new Mishimoto radiator which came to four hundred fifty one dollars and twenty eight cents not an easy buy at all but it also shattered my under tray which I just bought a new under tray for $180 I believe but it's an aluminum under tray from LRB speed I'm super excited for it it's not here yet but it's on its way uh, I'm accumulating parts for when we rebuild this thing as it isn't running right now back to the maintenance type stuff uh, $97 worth of coolant hoses um, $131 worth of premix um, I got a Bluetooth adapter which was 20 bucks um, and that's pretty much it i also got some stickers i think it was 20 bucks for all my stickers but they're all very meaningful stickers and they needed to be had all right guys so the grand total for the amount of money that i have put into this car 
thus far in mods is three thousand six hundred fifty nine dollars and seventy three cents which brings your grand total up to eleven thousand two hundred nineteen dollars and seventy three cents and I'd have to say it's worth every single penny um, I'm gonna play back some videos now of the car and how much fun I had with it and really it all just speaks for itself I've had some of the best times of my life in this car and I can't thank it enough <laughs> So as I do, as you do, you give it a new motor and we're going to get back to it next year.